All right, hi guys. Um, I know we're kind of a little running, a little rushed right now, so we'll try to move quickly. Um, so working alone sucks. I mean, let's really put it simply. That's not to say that anybody who works for yourself or working remotely is a problem, but I'm not sure what, is there something going on? Do I need to do anything? No, we're good? Okay, sorry guys. Okay, so uh, yeah, working, working by yourself, it's really just not a good time. I, I've done it for many, many years. In 2007, I started up a uh, business with a couple of buddies of mine. After things kind of went south uh, in 2010, I found myself basically working by myself. Uh, for the three years prior to that, I, I did business stuff. I did not know any coding. There was really nothing that connected me to WordPress other than the SEO guy I was working with said, hey, all these projects that are just left half developed, why don't you move them over to WordPress? It's something I think you can handle. So that's, that's what I did. And uh, years later, I now, I do premium plugins, custom themes. I mean, if it needs to be coded, I code it. And literally everything I learned, except for a little bit of front end from one of my good friends, I learned from this community. And really everything that's my success over the past few years, not to say that I'm you know, rolling in the money or anything, but the success that I've had has come from being involved in this community. So for four years, this is what I did. I lived this. I read forums, I read blogs, I did not come to a WordCamp from 2010 to 2014. And honestly, I think it was probably one of the best things I could have done. Now, some people are on a bit of a faster learning curve than I am, um, so they might have you know, moved forward a little quickly from this, but I, I really found like a, a very large subset of blogs to read or you know, plugins that I knew fulfilled the requirements that I had, things that I could build off of, uh, people I could reach out to. And it wasn't a lot of one-on-one, -on -one. it was you know, discovering Pippin's blog for the first time in 2010. It was, you know, reading things that every, all these amazing people have put together that taught me how to code. And then I don't know if any of you have had this fun experience, but we also have a, uh, or used to have a very active WordPress community in IRC chat. And so I would jump in there occasionally and get flamed for not knowing how things worked. So track forward about four years. And after just reading and reading and occasionally answering some questions on the forums, I, I felt like I was an expert in WordPress. Uh, I felt like I was an expert in WordPress. That's the interesting thing. There's a lot of theories about how we be, go from novice to expert. And most people don't really realize or find it very frustrating that after we move to that expert level, very quickly you move, if you're doing it right at least, I think, you move right back to intermediate or even novice. Because if you're at a point where you feel like you know everything about a subject, you're not looking deep enough. And I think that's where I was at. I, I would go to these client meetings, and albeit I'm still working by myself at this point, it was really hard to find these clients when you don't have a community to work with. And I would portray myself as the expert, because I mean, everybody's an expert to somebody else. And it worked out very well every time until I run into a problem, and then I would rack my brains. It, it, you know, it's very easy for a development problem or a business problem to all of a sudden very quickly become almost depression because you don't know what to do. And if you don't have a community, if you don't have people to talk to about this that are doing what you're doing, you find yourself completely lost. I, I mean, there are times where I think I've done Google searches and I've literally come up with, you have six results and they're all from the same page and none of them are even remotely applicable what I'm looking for. And had I been working within a community, had I known that there were literally thousands of other people just like me out there, it probably would have taken 15 minutes to find somebody to send me an article, a link, a guide, uh, you know, a GitHub gist, whatever it would have been to solve my problem. Not because they were going to solve my problems for me, but because it was just going to make my life better and maybe I'm going to help them out. Maybe they just happen to know it. They've, stuck, they've been stuck in that situation for a while. Which brings me to my, my very first, I think, piece of advice, if you haven't taken anything yet from this. Whenever you go into these situations, when you're on a forum, when you're looking for an answer for this plugin doesn't do this, if you see somebody else asking a question that you can answer, answer it. Don't hesitate, don't blink, log in, sign up if you have to, and answer it, because that person can solve your problems later. You'll never know it until it comes up. But 
if you want help from a community like ours, the best thing you can do is try to give back more than you take away from it. Because what we'll take away is more than enough for each person. I mean, the pie is, at this point in time, the pie is more than big enough for all of us. And it's, there's a camaraderie there that we don't have in other groups. I was the business end of things for many years, and I went to American Marketing Association meetings and a number of other groups that would meet, and it was really about passing off business cards. It wasn't about helping one another. It wasn't about bonding over a common experience, which leads me to the next part. You know, maybe, maybe you're not at the point. I was not at the point in 2013, 2014, I was not ready to talk to other people in any real way beyond uh, maybe IRC or Twitter. And it's not that I, I didn't feel comfortable with it, but I was still, I felt like an imposter. And I'm sure if you guys haven't heard about it yet, you will as this weekend goes on. Imposter syndrome is a very real thing. When you've spent four years like I did reading everything you could that's WordPress related, trying to be as much of an expert as possible, when all of a sudden you're watching these presentations on WordPress.tv or you're listening to some amazing podcasts by some very smart people, it becomes very easy to feel like you're the imposter in the room, that you don't have anything. To, like, these guys know everything already. What do you have to contribute? But it's, it's your experience. It's your uniqueness. It's what they've gone through slightly different from you or maybe completely different from you that you can bring to the table. And it didn't take long after this step in my life to actually make the jump to actually being here. In fact, being here right now today. I spent maybe a year listening to, watching presentations on WordPress.tv, listening to podcasts, before I, I felt like these people were my friends. And I, I mean, I didn't know them. I hadn't met them yet. But you know everything about them from their podcasts, or not everything, but a lot. Very personal information, because it's just a couple of people chatting for 45 minutes, for 30 minutes. And I had the good fortune of August in 2014 making the decision to go to WordCamp New York City. I was there bright and early, nervous as can be, because it was my first day. I had no idea what to expect. And the first person that I talked to and I met was Andrew Nason. Now, if any of you know who Andrew Nason is, then you realize he's a very nice guy. He's not hard to talk to. But when you're you know, in my position, when you feel like an imposter already, seeing somebody that is, seem to have their name on everything WordPress as some sort of, in some sort of way, they've reviewed it, they've discussed it, you can, there's articles written about the things that he does. To meet him and just to have a very one-on-one -on -one conversation, you realize that these coding heroes that, at least that I have, and I know so many of us do, they're, they're normal people. So, why, I mean, not even just, I mean, they're brilliant. I don't want to take away from that, uh, the, but, they struggle with, you know, walking through an array just like any of us might on a given night if you're programming or trying to figure out what plugin is going to actually fill that gap for you because, you know, sometimes it's not worth doing it yourself or paying someone to do it because the work's already been done. I mean, I've heard it at a couple of talks that reinventing the wheel, it's, it's never the way to go if you can avoid it because somebody else has already put the legwork in. And that's what our community does is we have, I think 30,000 plus plugins in the repo, and that's not including premium plugins. There's a lot of work, that good work, that's been out there from our community that will continue to help us become better and build better products. So by jumping in, joining the community, I went to the first WordCamp, I came right back, I signed up to speak at WordCamp DFW, I spoke there, I spoke the next year, um, now speaking here, I help organize the meetup. I help, I'm helping organize WordCamp DFW next year. And in all this time, from 2014 to now, I've increased my income by like 300% just for the fact that I work with the community. Again, I'm not saying I am rich by any means. When you're in a dry spell as a freelancer, making 300% more isn't necessarily a lot of money. But I have people who are willing to pass clients onto me. I have people I can pass clients that I can't handle onto others. Showing up to those meetups, coming to WordCamps, talking to as many people. When they say there's a competition to see how many people you can connect with, don't, don't treat it as a competition. Treat it as your livelihood because it can be. Every one of the people that you meet might have a job opportunity or something that is going to significantly increase your ability to make money, write better code, write better blogs. I mean, it, it is absolutely amazing. And, and finally, I'm probably over at this point, but the most important thing that I've, I, by getting involved, is by finding a way to communicate with these people. 
And by being able to get involved, I, Slack has become a great tool to use. Every one of those things that are up there is a group that I actually belong to, and there's lots more WordPress groups out there that are very specific to what you want to learn. I, I, was, I got the good fortune of being invited to a Gravity Form Slack room, and I have never had a shortage now of new information to learn about Gravity Forms. That's not to say any other plugin is uh, not as good, but it's amazing. Uh, the Pods Foundation, uh, amazing plugin, amazing developers, and now I have a huge network of people who know about this stuff that can help me almost at any given notice because I'm always willing to help them. So with that said, after all of it, the most important steps is to, to work in your group is to be informed. That doesn't mean know the answers, but it means knowing when to ask the right questions, trying to read what you can, trying to stay informed so that you can be helpful to everyone. Obviously, be respectful. We live in a volunteer community. We work and live in this volunteer community. The best way to succeed is to be noticed and not suck at what you do. But, and that actually has changed my life, that line from Helen Ho Sandy, I believe, said that in WordCamp New York 2014. And that has been my mindset from here on out. And be proactive. If you see a problem, if you see a way you can help somebody, just, just do it. Take the five minutes to do it or show them where you would look. Any kind of help is always hugely appreciated. And just by being visible and being out there, you will increase your abilities in every aspect of your business infinitely. Here's some, uh, these are all my resources I've uh, devised over the past seven years. You can also find my slides. It's the very first post on markratch.com. And Really, if you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to pull me aside. I'm, I'm happy to help everybody and anybody that I can. And any questions if we have time? Otherwise, thank you guys so much. That's, that's a whole other topic, but I actually I use Yoast more than anything as a uh, the blogs he writes about like new, newest Google updates, things like that. Their team really stays on up to date onto any new uh, trends that are happening or anything that Google has changed unexpectedly. So it's it's sorry, say that again. I do use it as a as a tool to plug in itself, but um, there's a lot of great SEO plugins out there. Um, I. I, the, the list that I put here are really, uh, it's, it's educational material. It's not any specific plugin. Because there's, but if you have questions about specific plugins, pull me aside. I'll go hang out at the happiness bar after this. Okay. And with that, uh, Saeed is an amazing talker. Here he is.